Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony and welcome to another edition of BNA Sports Talk. So I'm on the go today. Sorry if there's a little bit of noise and wind in the background, but I want to do the state of the NFC East. So now that Washington's out of the playoffs, they're the number, I should have checked, but probably around the 18th pick. Uh, we all know the draft positions of each team. We know the needs. We know kind of what players they want to cut. And I kind of just want to do the overall view because yesterday, Doug Peterson got fired. It's kind of like, it might seem like a mutual thing, uh, but I made a uh, video on my BNA Sports Instagram busy talking about my immediate reaction of it. I would watch it if you guys are interested in that sort of thing and also follow me there. But yeah, basically, Doug Peterson is out. And um, the, the person to replace him is going to be very interesting. Now, I've heard rumors of Eric Bieniemy. That was the first thing I thought of, actually, when I recorded uh, previously yesterday. I didn't like the recording. I was just like, Eric Bieniemy would actually be a pretty good option. Andy Reid. Uh, and th that sort of thing. But I don't think he's that much of an offensive genius. I think that'd be a great move if you're a Giants fan for them to do that. Brian Dayball and Arthur Smith, I don't think are viable candidates for that job because they want to work with a, a, a quarterback that's not broken. <laughs> like Carson Wentz, we think, is broken at this point. They need a completely roster rehaul. Are you going to have to fire Howie Roseman? So this roster is in shambles. They are $50 million over the cap next year. They could cut Darius Slay, save around 5 or $6 million. Uh, they could cut also Derek Barnett. He would save $10 million. That's, you know, that's one of the things you can do. You could trade Carson Wentz, and that would save a whole load of money too. But basically, you have to unload a bunch of contracts and then hope that you draft well. Their draft pick at number six, Howie Roseman doesn't like drafting linebackers high. That's from what I've heard. He doesn't value that position high. So you think either quarterback or wide receiver. Their main needs for me right now, you need help in the interior offensive line. Jason Kelsey is still viable for now. Uh, you also need uh, maybe tackle support, but you have Andre Diller coming back. And then I think Mark, uh, Jason Peters is gone. Lane Johnson is probably coming back, but he's, you know, an injury. He's an injury waiting to happen. Uh, so overall, this team's a mess. They're over under wins for me next year. If there's 17 games, I have six and a half. You know, just because I think Carson Wentz isn't bad. Their quarterback situation is in shambles. At number six, you could pick QB three, maybe QB four. So that's going to be rough. You're going to have to stick with Carson Wentz. I think this signing means you're sticking with Carson Wentz. Um, and that's pretty much my summary of the Eagles. They're, they're fourth in my power rankings for the NFC East. Number three in my power rankings is the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I don't trust their coaching. They hired Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn was made for defenses. He coached my Florida Gators, so I have a little bit of a bias for him. That was 10 years ago, though, but uh, I think that Dan Quinn is all right, but he got relieved of his defensive play calling duties, and you saw the defense improve. Even last year, when he relieved of defensive calling abilities, the defense started improving, and now this year, you had uh, Raheem Mostert, whatever, what's the name? Robert Morris, whatever his name is, their head coach, basically make their defense 100 times better. You know, they, they held the Chiefs to 17 points at the end of the season. That's impressive. So Dan Quinn, I'm not too sure about him. Going back to the rest of the team, you can't sign Dak Prescott because signing him right now with the current contracts you have, it'd be $17 million over the cap. A major trade piece could be Amari Cooper. Now, there's some teams you can trade him to, maybe like a Minnesota Vikings, maybe... Um, Maybe even a Patriots in a way. Turn back to uh, turn back to Las Vegas or trade him to Las Vegas because he's not technically going back to Las Vegas because he played in Oakland before. But yeah, so there's some teams that are going to be looking for wide receivers. There are always teams looking for that. If I'm the Giants, I don't do it. But it would be interesting because Jason Garrett was uh, did have Amari Cooper for years. That's something you could trade. You also think about getting rid of Tyron Smith. He's getting injured year after year. Uh, really, penalties have been a problem for him over the past time. You also can cut Brown, Antonio Brown, or Anthony Brown, sorry. He didn't play great. Uh, their biggest needs to me are one cornerback. You have young talent there, Trayvon Diggs. Uh, I think that's his name. Diggs that they got from Alabama. You, you don't really have that much there. Right home back, uh, Awuzie. He grades out more of like a free safety. I think they use him a little bit more of that this year, if I'm not mistaken. The defensive tackles, they're all right, but they just play no gap responsibility. I think that the, the defensive coach ideally would solve that situation. And then for um, the, the biggest needs, other than cornerback, it's not really that much. I think you have to get another offensive lineman, whether that's a guard or a tackle, and then probably a center. Uh, that, that's, that's another big one right there because Tyler Biotis, he was, he was a, a rookie. He did all right, but you know the, the guards had to, especially Zach Martin when he was playing, he had to compensate for um, Tyler Biotis. At least that was the beginning of the season. I'm not sure how he did towards the end because I wasn't really paying attention that much. But yeah, they, they also have a need now, a linebacker, believe it or not. Uh, Jalen Smith not playing that well. So you, you have some things you need to solve here, but the coaching is the main issue for me. I have their over-under wins next season at around 7. They're, I have them like 7 and 10, that kind of record. Obviously, you can win more or less based on some luck, some bounces. Number two is the Washington football team. They have the coach. 
are they like a top five coaching situation in the league? Jack Del Rio, uh, Scott Turner's son, and Ron Rivera. It seems like they're all growing together. This year is a major year to come together. They might be above 500. I have their over-under wins next year around eight, eight and a half. Uh, that, you have them at a 500 team. Now, the reason why I'm not accelerating them is who's going to be their quarterback. Alex Smith is 10 and 5 or 11 and 5 when he starts for the, the Washington football team. Uh, so, I mean, that's good. That's really, really good. But is he going to be able to excel Terry McLaurin, Cam Sims? Is he going to be able to distribute to those weapons? He's going to consistently get injured. I think you have to make a big free agent move at quarterback. As far as the Dallas Cowboys, I didn't really mention them before. But, you know, you see all on the screen what, the, what I had for their quarterback situation. But for the Washington football team, you have to go free agency. You have to go with an established quarterback. You can't go in the draft unless you want to draft a late round one that you think can develop. Maybe a Kyle Trask falls to the second round or third round for some reason. But um, you have to, I think, get Matt Stafford, get a guy that's going to be able to learn under, you know, keep under Ron Rivera and have a stable franchise that now all of a sudden has a little bit of a winning culture a little bit of a winning culture you know are they gonna have a new team name next year that's another thing are they are they gonna be the red tails or the red fins or whatever it is the uh, red warriors i don't know whatever the hell they want to decide their team name to be uh as far as their cap situation they could cut uh morgan moses for a decent amount of money uh, but morgan moses he got out 80 on pff he he really came onto his own this year he struggled over the past couple years he really played well but can you trust Brandon Sheriff? You need another offensive lineman. I think you need a, a right tackle. You need a solid right tackle because I don't think I don't know where the right tackle is. But obviously they're uh, they're probably not doing that great because Alex Smith is always constantly getting injured. Um, but yeah, the offensive line is decent. Uh, it's not great. Also, wide receiver, you don't really need anything there. You have guys that are growing coming up. That's fine. I would I'd be mad if they got Amari Cooper, but that's fine. Uh, they can cut Alex Smith for sixteen million dollars or fourteen million dollars next year. They have forty three million dollars in cap space. And all of a sudden, you have a lot of moves you need to make. Their biggest needs, maybe safety. Landon Collins, you could trade him away. But uh, safety, Troy Apke was fine. You know, you had some young players that were developing this year that, you know, came into their own towards the end of the season. They had a top two passing defense, which is impressive. But Kendall Fuller felt like he got a little bit lucky in the beginning of the season. He looks like he's falling off just a tad bit. Uh, And then who else else could they cut? Um, Not really that many others. But they have a lot of cap space they can use. They, I think they're going to be very active in free agency because they want to take that next step. Ron Rivera sees his time is ticking. And, you know, they, they have a spot in this division. But the number one power ranking is the New York Giants. So let me talk about their uh, cap situation real quick. Uh, so they have Kevin Zeidler. If you're unfamiliar, if you're not a Giants fan, Kevin Zeidler, we can cut him for like $10 million or $14 million, something crazy like that. Nate Solder, we can cut. So two offensive linemen. The biggest needs are for this team. We're going to need another offensive lineman, whether it's Villanueva, whether you want to get a Trent Williams who's a free agent, that would, there'll be a heck of a lot of money. But, you know, if you want to get a guy like that, Trent Williams was the number one rated tackle on PFF this year. Usually guys don't fall off that quickly, but it is possible. Trent Williams is like 31, 32 years old. But imagine Andrew Thomas, Trent Williams, and then a Matt Parrott uh, on this offensive line kind of being the swing tackle, the guy that fills in. Uh, that, that's going to be good for them. And as far as uh, some other cuts and trades, Golden Tate. That's that's a major one. David Mayo, we can cut. We signed him to like a three-year deal, but that's easily you can work out, you know, work it out. But we have our solid center. That's what we do fine. I should have. No, I already made the graphics, but I should have did like biggest strengths. If I say the biggest strengths for the Giants, it's defensive line. But we don't rush the passer that well. We need an edge guy and we need a wide receiver. Those two are interchangeable. You have to address those. I think full and head on. The rest of it, you can kind of coach. The rest of it, you know, we don't really need a CB2. We had James Bradbury did enough. But having a uh, – drafting a guy high could really help us there. He's just like we, we could play different concepts. But Julian Love, I think we're fine in, in that position. I, Isaac Yadam still has one more year left on his contract. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really mind if we don't make a significant move at cornerback. But we have to solve the edge. I don't want really a project there. Leonard Williams, resigning him would be a big problem. But we have only $8 million in cap. With all these moves, we can free up to like $40 million. But, yeah, those are my biggest needs for the Giants. Offensive guard, wide receiver, edge. And as far as coaching, our standards, we have Joe Judge. The whole city believes in him, and that's what you need. He's going to be able to coach up guys even though we don't have a great roster. He's going to bring in guys that he knows uh, under the Bill Belichick tree like Nick Saban does. He's bringing in um, – he's bringing in – what's his name? Uh, oh, the guy from the Texans that we all, we all hate. But, you know, he's bringing that guy in to be his offensive coordinator. He, he, like, come on. But Bill O'Brien. So – Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know you guys think which team has the best future in the NFC East. I have it as the Giants. I had it at them last year. We all saw what happened. The Eagles tanked. The Dallas Cowboys spent too much money. They tanked. They may even have to trade Ezekiel Elliott. But uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.